Hi, my name's Rick Wallum, and today I'm going to be tying a beta soft tackle. Um, in the vise, I've got a size uh, 14. I usually tie these on a 16, 18, 20, and 22 um, TMC 226 BL. So it's a barbless hook, um, and it works really well. It's got a wide gap. It's got a small turned up eye and I found it to be a very good uh, hook. And utilizing the name hook, it hooks fish very well. Um, as I attach my thread, uh, the thread I'm using today is a Uni um, ADOT in Olive Dunn. And I sort of use my thread as a um, goal post, if you will. I've heard another tire use that term, and um, I, I like it because it describes um, where on the hook I am going to attach the thread, and I can use that as a measurement tool. Um, first thing I'm going to tie in is some lemon wood duck. Um, Natural lemon wood duck has really good um, barring on it and makes for some good tailing material. I'm kind of preening the feather to match the tips. And I'll go in and snip out the, the amount of material I want. Kind of get it pinched in my fingers preening it, getting it in shape, and just a little bit shorter than the hook shank itself. I use a loose loop um, with a pinch, and then I can pull that straight down. And I do that two or three times to ensure that that tail um, ends up on the top of the hook. I'll wind that forward, and I will wind the excess material as well up into the point. I this is a fragile feather, so I can break it off. I don't need to go in and trim it. And when you break that off, um, it makes it much easier. Here I'm using a little dubbing wax that I've got on my finger. And one thing I've noticed that it is that it'll strengthen the thread a little bit. It'll also keep the thread from fraying. I've gone behind the tail uh, with a wrap, kind of horizontal, and then bring it back up and over. And that just cocks the, the tail the way I want it. Um, next, I'm going to take a goose biot. Uh, they make these in several, or dye these in several different colors. Um, this one happens to be blue wing olive. One of the tricks about tying with goose biot is on the, it's the leading edge of a primary wing. Um, and what it does is there's a natural curvature to it. And so I'm going to use that natural curvature when I tie the fly and knowing how to properly tie this in. Uh, and as you can see, they are like a fan. If I fan them out, they're individual little barbules. And on this particular pattern, I want to show a rib, uh, a raised rib, if you will. And I'm holding this um, a away from me um, and away from the hook. As I tie it, tie it in, it's bending away from me as the tire. And if you notice where my finger is pointing, uh, there's a little notch. And I want to have that notch on the bottom and the curvature away from me. And that makes sure, that ensures that I, when I tie it in, I will get that raised ribbing effect um, 
of the goose biot. I wind my thread forward to the point to where I will end the body on this, the abdomen. And what I do is I come forward, I come up and over the hook shank, and I will utilize the hook point to trap the uh, material down so then I can easily go in, grasp it with a hackle plier, And this is a fairly fragile uh, material, so I want to be very careful um, when wrapping it. My first wrap being the most important. It's probably the most fragile. And then from there I can start putting tension on it and getting a nice, even separation between the ribs. And that's creating the abdomen of the fly. I get come forward to the tie-off point. I go behind the material with my thread. And again, by waxing the thread previously, it gives it a little bit more durability. And then I'm going to come in and tie just in front of that. And then I use my whole hand to push the thread out of the way. And then when I make my cut, I'm not um, in danger of cutting my thread. I have to kind of cut through my finger to cut through the thread. So that ensures that the thread is not going to be cut at a critical point. Make a couple more wraps just to secure that down. I'll add a little bit more dubbing wax. And I've got that dubbing wax just on my finger. Um, and it's handy to have. And I can constantly use the, the wax as needed. Um, I don't have to reach for it. Next thing I'm going to use is um, for the abdomen. I like to use uh, beaver dubbing. I find it's a real easy material to use. It's a natural fiber. Uh, I have this dyed in a gray olive. And beaver dubbing, um, a lot of the companies will have a base of colors and you can mix and match those. This one happens to be a gray olive. I've taken Adam's gray dubbing and olive dubbing and mixed the two together to get the proper coloration I want for this particular fly. The reason I like beaver is that it is a very fine fibered um, material and using very little. Um, it does have guard hairs. I tend to, before, when I open a package of material, I tend to um, prep them um, before tying. It saves time in the long run. It's time spent up front. Um, you won't have to waste a lot of time in the end when you're tying flies. Um, I could use a dubbing wax on this, but I'm, I'm just wetting my finger with a little saliva. It gives me a little bit of a grip on this material, and I make a fine noodle. And then I'm able to push that up. I push it right up against the body of the fly. And I'm putting a bit of tension on the thread as I'm wrapping this. And, you know, people say, well, how much tension? <laughs> uh, there's a fine line between breaking the thread and not breaking the thread. And that's the amount of tension I like to use. It's right on that edge. Um, I could, and I probably will. I uh, normally don't tie this fly this size, so um, by tying several flies of the size that you normally tie, you know the proportions that you, you know, over time, you tie a couple of hundred of these flies, you know exactly how much material to put on the thread or on the hook to make the fly look like the natural. 
Here I'm just building enough um, of a thorax that when I do wrap my hackle, um, it gives me something to push against and makes the, the hackle fibers flare. Um, for the hackle, this is a hen neck feather, which uh, is not used for dry flies. It's um, a little limper um, material and it lays back really well and it's a soft um, hackle. So it, won't, it doesn't have stiff barbules and that allows it to give motion when it's wet in the water. And this is a whiting, um, upside down, but a whiting hen cape. Um, to prepare the feather, I will strip off the um, fluff at the bottom, which will expose the quill. And then at the top, what I will do is I take, and instead of stripping those barbules off of the quill, I, I trim them very closely with a pair of scissors. And that gives me something to bite on when I tie the feather in. It's not going to slip on me. It gives me, with a combination of the wax I have on my finger, it gives me something to bite um, into that hackle. Make a couple of wraps. And if you notice, there's excess material there. I just fold that back and make one or two wraps in front of it. That'll, that cleans up the head area of the fly. So I don't have a bunch of um, barbules hanging out that I'm going to trap later with my, with my thread wraps to finish the head. I've also, um, on one side, the, the side that I is first going to make contact with the hook, I've, I've cut a little deeper um, down the shaft of the quill. Um, so when I make my first wrap, it will lay against the, the hook shank. I'm taking my fingers and sweeping those first couple of fibers back. And that sets me up so the feather really wants to um, sweep back toward the back of the fly. And that's what I'm looking for. When these fibers, these barbules are wet, um, they will sort of envelop the body of the fly and look like a, um, you know, emergent wings of the fly. I've made three wraps with this soft tackle material. I find that's enough. I'm going to go in and now I'm going to start stripping those barbules out before I finish the fly. And what that does for me is that it exposes a, a quill that I'm not going to trap any excess fibers of those barbules down. I make a couple of wraps over the top, trapping the quill against the hook shank, and then sweeping that back, wrapping back over that quill, and that will lock it in place and also make it a little more durable. And so when I do make my trim, it um, traps as that quill down and it just makes it a little bit more durable. I'm sweeping those hackle barbules back and making several wraps, building a nice head. I put a little um, wax on. That way I can direct exactly where I want those thread wraps to be and they will not slip um, off of that point. As you can see here, those hackle fibers are swept back over the body. And at that point, I do a little quick whip finish. I'm going to spin my thread to flatten it out and make three quick wraps with the whip finish. I pull down, I push up on the eye and pull down on the thread to really secure and seat that thread. Reach in with my scissors 
and that's the com completed fly. The only thing I need to do now is I use a um, Trout Hunter um, water-based uh, head cement, and it works really well. It gives good penetration to the thread wraps and gives a real good strong um, head so it won't unravel. A trick I like to use is I'll use a pinky on the vise to give me stability or a finger on the vise and that way I can be really precise with where I want to lay that glue. And that is a beta soft tackle. Um, this fly, I'd like to call it mine, but um, Renee Harrop, a uh, very well-known tire on the Henry's Fork, um, used a lot of goose biot, and I found this fly to be very effective. I fish it um, as an emerger. I will fish to rising fish. I tend to use a intermediate fly line and a fairly short leader, and I can cast quartering this fly through the fish or even dead drifting it. I've fished it upstream. I've fished it many different ways, but fishing at subsurface and have had really good luck. Um, you can fish it like a dry fly and, and you know, you shorten your cast so you're, you're not casting 10 feet above the rising fish. Usually when they're eating a fly like this, um, they're, they have to eat a lot of them. So they're constantly feeding and you can put this fly a foot in front of a rising fish and get a short drift and watch the fish's reaction to it and set the hook. And again, that's the soft tackle betas.